Hello, my name is Clifford Pierre, and as promised, I said I would reveal the Holy Grail today on this Super Bowl Sunday. What is the Holy Grail? The Holy Grail has always been rumored to be a cup, a plate, or a dish, something that looks like this. But I'm here to tell you today, this is not the Holy Grail, of course, and the Holy Grail is not a cup that looks like this, but it is a cup. But before I get into this, I want to show you the Seder Square. This is a replica of the Seder Square, the second oldest Seder Square that was found in Dura Europa, Syria. Now you got to remember, Christians were first called Christians in Antioch, Syria. So finding this symbol in the world's oldest known church on the earth in Dura Europa, Syria, was very important. And I believe that this was something many of the historians overlooked. But God was able to explain it to me for 111 days and show me why this symbol is the Holy Grail. And I'm going to show you. Now, what is the Holy Grail? The Holy Grail means holy blood. And I'm going to show you the Holy Blood. Now, the Holy Grail cup is assumed to be the cup that caught the blood of Jesus on the day that he was crucified on the cross. But I'm going to show you how this symbol was is the symbol or sign, rather, that caught the blood of Jesus Christ. And it's clearly written in here, but you have to see it. The Bible tells you that we will see and not perceive. We will hear and not understand unless we hear, see with our eyes, hear with our ears and understand with our hearts. Everything I'm going to show you, like I said, when you look at the Seder Square, you're not, you don't see it. You don't see how this is. Anything but 25 letters, y'all, five words. But I'm going to show you how to understand how the Seder Square is the Holy Grail cup, which caught the blood of Jesus Christ at the crucifixion. And so just bear with me. Give me a few moments of your time. I'm sure this is going to be monumental to you. You will, you will not forget it. You will remember it. And I'm sure you will want to share it with everyone that you know in your life. Now, I've been blasting this image across the internet for a few days now, but this is my interpretation given by the Holy Spirit on how the Ark of the Covenant looks today, if it was around. And using the Seder Square as my primary focal point, I'm going to show you how the Ark of the Covenant is now called the Ark of the Testimony. And we see Aaron's rod. We see the two tables of stone that was inside of here. We have the pot of manna, which is called the hidden manna because inside of the Ark of the Covenant, it was hidden from the sight of the people. But this is what God wanted all the generations after the Israelites to see that this is how he sustained the Israelites for 40 years inside of the desert. So all of these images, I'm going to show you why this is something that correlates to what the Seder Square is. Because this relates to Jesus Christ and the gift of the Holy Spirit, which the Seder Square is. The Seder Square is the gift of the Holy Spirit, which is the comforter. Jesus said he would pray to the Father to send us another comforter, meaning he was the first comforter. So he is sending us a second comforter. That comforter is something that will ease your mind, give you comfort, and not worry anymore about any problems that you may have on this earth. And that's what the comforter should do. And as I'm going to show you, he gave us his word. 
And there's nothing more that God can give us that assures us that he's going to do something than giving us his word. Jesus Christ was the word made flesh, as is recorded in the Bible. He is the comforter made flesh. But Jesus said when he gets to heaven, he's going to have the father send us another comforter. And God sent his word. This is the promise, as Jesus said, the promise of the father. All of the letters of the Seder Square reveals the name Paternoster. This is the only name that Jesus Christ gave us to pray to, our father. Paternoster means our father in Latin. So we are able to see the father's name on the Seder Square. But you, all, you see now is the mercy seat. And as you see, I've covered the two angels that were above the mercy seat and they cover up the words that spell Atzor. And Atzor means treasure in Hebrew. And in the middle, we have this word Eden. E-D-E-N. Clear as day. And this shows us that we are in the garden. Because on the day of atonement, God would meet with man once a year. And the most holy room was considered as heaven on earth. So the Seder Square shows how heaven came to earth above the two angels that were above the Ark of the Covenant. And so I'm going to break it down on the chalkboard in a moment, but I'm going to show you how this image was perceived. Now I'm showing you the image of the two angels. And as you can see, they're sitting here. This is to symbolize that Jesus' spirit was what was in the Ark of the Covenant. He is no longer there because he has risen from the grave. And that's what these angels are doing there because God is no longer going to meet with man above the Ark of the Covenant because there is, he has made a new place to meet with us. And as Jesus said, he stands at the door and knock. And if any man's open the door, he will come in and sup with him. Now the biblical definition of the word cup is fate, F-A-T-E. So God is going to come in and share your fate with you. And that means he's going to be in covenant with you. So when he's going to come into your home, into your life, into your world, he's going to sup with you. He's going to share your fate. And whatever your fate you believe that you're going to be uh, live everlasting as Jesus promised, or if you don't sup with him, then you will die everlastingly. You will be everlasting removed, eternally removed rather from this world. So that is the cups that you either choose to drink or not. So that is what Jesus, where God now meets with us. He doesn't meet with us over this Ark of the Covenant. He meets over the testimony. And that is with the cross because Jesus said we must lift him up. Jesus was lifted up on the cross. His cup was his fate, his fate was that he was going to die. He prophesied to all of his disciples that they would kill him. And the Seder Square embodies the exact words which show they shall murder him. And I'm going to show you that. So this is why he does not meet with us above the Ark of the Covenant. He comes inside our homes. He meets outside of our doors. And so we see the hidden manna. That is the Seder Square. All the letters of the Seder Square also spells the word Panum Nostrum, which in Latin means our bread. So the Seder Square is the hidden manna because it has been hidden on the walls um, around the world for nearly 2,000 years now. And no one has recognized that the Seder Square was the hidden manna. As God said, you shall see it and not um, perceive it. You will hear about it. You don't understand these five words. He said, and you wouldn't understand it. He said, unless you see with your eyes, hear with your ears, and understand with your heart. So 
like I said, I'm going to be able to show it and break it down to you and show you how the angels are meeting uh, above the Garden of Eden. And now we have the two stone tablets. And they have the two Ten Commandments on it. And something I want to show you. Here is one of the five commandments. These are the last uh, six to ten. And this is the Seder Square. And if you look at them, you see the resemblance of how God merged the two tables, the two tables of stone, which were the two covenants, as Jesus said, and he merged the two tables onto one. As he said, love the Lord with all your heart, might, strength, and soul. And he said, love your neighbor as you love yourself. That's what the two tables represent. And I'm going to show you that when I get to the board. And I'm going to show you how this is the Lord's table. The Seder Square is the Lord's table. And I'll get to that in a minute. So let me get to work. But one last thing, we have Aaron's rod, and I want to just break down Aaron's rod real quick. As we know, Aaron's rod butted uh, real almonds. It, it's a dead stick. If you understand what a uh, rod is, it is a branch. And that's who Jesus was. The prophet Isaiah said, the man called the branch. And I'm going to show you how Jesus assume the priesthood of the, the Levitical priesthood of Aaron and he said he came for division. It's been said that the almonds that blossomed and bloomed on Aaron's rod had some sweet almonds and some were uh, bitter almonds. And I'm going to show you how this is also on the Seder Square. And that's the division that Jesus comes to the earth to judge. He said, if he judges, and that's what I'm going to show you. It's if, and that's up to you. That's why he uses the word if. And as you see inside the box, this is what his angels are going to do. They're going to collect some almonds that are going to be treasured by God, the chosen almonds off of Aaron's rod. And as you see, the ones that are left behind, these are the ones that are going to be burned. As God said, he wouldn't, these are not offered to God. The bitter almonds are not going to be offered to God unless they decide to give their life to Christ, get baptized, and get converted. Once they are converted and given their life to Christ, then they could be added into the pile of the chosen. So I'm going to show you how all of this works. Give me a minute. Let me just slide this out of the way. So that I now can get to work. Now the first symbol I'm going to work with is the Ark of the Covenant. Now I'm the only person who makes the Seder Square in a circle. God revealed that to me on how to unlock it. That's why my book is called The Seder Square Unlocked. Because the word of God is not chained. It's not locked. And that's why no one has been able to understand how to read the Seder Square. Because they kept it locked up the way it is, written, but they never decided to take it and turn the letters. So I did. And I'm going to do that now to show you. It is a wheel within a wheel. Just like the prophet Isaiah, Ezekiel saw it in live action at the river. I'm going to use the red to symbolize the angel. Now, there's going to be a rough drawing of it. Now, 
want you to see all of these letters that makes this. This is the wheel. The word rotus means wheel. And so you see the wheel going this way, one wheel going that way. Going this way is red, and it is that way. But it makes one entire wheel, and it makes the two angels that are above the Ark of the Covenant. Because when you unlock it, you see the word Atsar. And Atsar means treasure or treasury. So that is the Ark of the Covenant because it kept all of the keepsakes that are inside of the Ark of the Covenant. And as I said, you now see the letter E, P, E, and N. But as you see, it is turning. And as you can see it here, in this position, it is a letter D. So you now have Eden. So when God met with the Israelites every year, once a year on the Day of Atonement, this was heaven coming to earth, paradise coming to earth, where God was able to give the, forgive the people of their sins for another year. But you also get another word, because if I turn this, I am now able to get a letter B. And now I have the word Ben, and Ben means son. If I take this and turn it another way, as you see, I can get a letter Q. You take this letter N, turn it upside down. Here's a letter N, turn it that way. I'm going to get the letter U, and I get E, N. And as we know, the queen is the bride, and that is the church. So all of the Israelites represented the church. The priests went into the um, most holy place, and he would make uh, atonement for everyone in the camp. And that's what Jesus did for us. He went behind the um, veil, and he made atonement for the bride, the queen, which is the church. And if you unlock the word bride, you get pride because we are all under Jesus who believe in Jesus and a pride is a pack of lions. And Jesus, of course, is the king of Judah, the lion of Judah. So we are a part of that tribe. And so we are a part of that pride. So there we have that. Now we see just like the, the Bible reads, in Eden, we are nude, N-U-D-E. We are naked, because when you come before God, you are naked in the fact that he knows everything about you. You have exposed your sins. He already knows it, but you have to reveal it to him anyway. You have to open and expose yourself to him as though you are nude and naked before the eyes of God. And that's what it represented. And of course, we know this is how Jesus went behind the veil. On the cross, he was naked. They stripped him of his clothes they, they, and on the cross. So he was naked on the cross and we we're able to see the word nude. So I got more words in here that I can pull out of here. We get... The Spanish word, and it is the word buen. And buen means good. Everything God made, he said it is good. And of course, this is the day Jesus died for us. And of course, he has now reconnected man with God. And as you see the word mended, M-E-N-D-E-D. -E -E so man's relationship when God has been restored from the Garden of Eden, we have now been connected with him. And that's what this is showing. But now I'm going to do it with the blue marker because I want to show you this infinity symbol. Because what this infinity symbol shows us is that this relationship is unending. We are with God for infinity. So we are able to see 
the union of God's son and it and his queen, which is the church. And what I want to show you from union is that if you have the capital letter N, you can take it and turn it sideways, and now you have a letter Z. So from union, I can unlock it, and I can now get the word Zion. And of course, this is the heavenly city that we are going to, the city of God. So we are able to see the city of God in this image that's here on the Seder Square. So we are, this is what this painting represents. This is my trademark painting that I have painting that was given to me and inspired by the Holy Spirit. As Jesus said, the Holy Spirit will come in and teach you. And the Holy Spirit taught me how to see all of this stuff. So this is how I'm able to, uh, to do it. Give me a second for get my eraser. Now I'm going to make another say the square. There's something else that I always do. When I make my say the squares, I always use a lowercase letter N. That's my trademark. Because that's the first letter I was able to unlock and recognize that this represents Jesus Christ. And that's what I'm going to show you right now. Is what exactly is the Seder Square. And right now I'm going to take this letter out so that you can see it. What you have here is the letter P. But if, like I said, if you turn it sideways, you are able to get a B. I get the E, S, O, R A T. I have the word Besserat. Besserat means gospel. This letter N, I'm going to make it in red because I want it to stand out. The letter N in Hebrew is a word. It's an alphabet in English, but in Hebrew it is a word. And it means the Messiah. I can't make this stuff up. It means the Messiah or heir to the throne of David. So now when you look at the Seder Square, you are able to see that this is a sign from above. Just as the prophet Isaiah also said, that the man called Branch would also be an ensign. For us, which is a flag, a banner. And so this is a sign for us to see that this is the gospel of the Messiah. And that's what the Seder Square gives us. There's, um, as I showed you, this image here of the Ark of the Covenant. The Seder Square is, when you make this in like this, you can also turn it sideways. And you get what looks like a letter C. And I'm able to take the rest of these letters and spell the word consecrated. So all of these letters spell consecrated. And that's why I say this is the cup of Jesus Christ. This is the Holy Grail. Because I, I'm going to show you to the next step that this Seder Square, these letters were consecrated. And were consecrated by the blood of the Messiah. This is has been made holy. And that's what consecrated means. It means to make holy. And so now I'm going to show you this other word. All the letters of the Seder Square spells. And it is.
the sanctum sanctorum, which is Latin, as all of the words in the city square are Latin. This means holy of holies. The Seder Square is the Holy of Holies. This marks your home as being consecrated and being a part of the Holy of Holies. And this is what Jesus meant when he said, put your peace on the house. The Seder Square is found on the homes of the early churches. This Seder Square that I showed you earlier, this one was found inside of the home of the early church, the world's oldest church on the earth. And it shows this home was consecrated because God is taking over. That's his plan. He says, they shall all know me. All know me. I just want you to deal with these letters. Now, who is me? Me is thou. So now we take these letters, all the letters that say all know God. That's an A, I got an L, I have a K, an N, O, a W, a G is a D, so I can make an O. We already got the O. So, what is God saying? They shall all know me. They shall all acknowledge God. That's why the Bible says, every knee shall bow and every tongue confess. The Seder Square was given. The gift of the Holy Spirit was given on the day of Pentecost. Pentecost unlocked, when I take all the letters that spells this, and I'll make it here, I'll put them in the little boxes. You got a P, you have an N, you have a T, and an O, and an S, and that's it. And what you get from this is Pentecost is the day the tongues confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. And I'm going to show you how the Seder Square shows that also that he is Lord. Because that's the house that Jesus Christ was sent here to build. As God told the prophet David that he, his son from his loins would build his house. And on that day of Pentecost, Jesus Christ sent the gift of the Holy Spirit as he promised. The promise of the Father and all the tongues confessed and 3,000 souls were saved on that day of Pentecost. And this is where I want to show you where this exists at. Erase as much as I can without erasing everything. I'm going to put the end back. Okay. So we're back to the Seder Square. Jesus told his disciples... To wait for the promise of the Father, that he was sent in his name. Now, I want to start with why this is the ensign of the Messiah and why it is the seal of the ensign. The Bible tells us that God sealed the Son, and Jesus shows us why, how he was sealed. And the first part we're going to take is the outside rule. We're going to work his sign. We're going to take all of these letters that make up the word will, and we're going to see the hidden word that is in there. Artos Astro is Greek for bread of heaven. 
Next, we're going to deal with this word, these letters here, R-E-P, all the way around. And what we get from there, because we already saw the P can be a D. Jesus is our Redeemer. And as I told you in the beginning, the letter N is a word that means Messiah or heir to the throne of David. So we see his seal. He's the bread of heaven. He's our Redeemer. And he is the Messiah. But there's also, there's more letters in there. Here is his name. Just as the prophet Isaiah said. Also in Latin is the word regener. That is the Latin word for branch. As I said, Aaron's rod. His name is Regener, R-E-G-E-N-E-R-E. -E -E -E. So we see his name there. Next we see, which is the most important part, as I just said, he told his disciples on the day of Pentecost for them that they, will have, they had to wait for the promise of the Father. And in here we see the word N-E-D-E-R. And it makes the cross, N-E-D-E-R, N-E-D-E-R. The sign of the cross four different ways. Four different directions, just like the letter T does, because that's the way the cross looked. And you see, there's four T's in four different directions. And what we get from that word, N E D E R, is the Hebrew word, which means vow. And this is the vow of God that He will send His Son, Regener, the branch. And as we see, vow. Is the same thing as a promise. You make a vow to somebody, you made a promise to someone. So we see why, this is why I'm showing you, the say the square is a promise. And as I said earlier, we in the same word, Atzer, which we saw made the uh, angels over the Ark of the Covenant, we have this word, Atzer, again. And this is what we are to treasure. We are to treasure the name of God, and we are to treasure his promise. That's what we are to worship. Who is his promise? His promise is Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is coming back again. So we are to worship the promise that Jesus Christ is coming back. That's what we are to stand here and wait for. So I want to get into the next parts that I promised about the square, which is Explaining the two tables. This one's pretty easy. When you look in the Bible, it always says two tables. And that's what it calls the Ten Commandments. They were the two tables. But let's take all the letters that spell two tables. We have a T, a W, an O, A, the B, L, and the S. And from this letters, from these letters rather, I am able to spell the word apostles. Because that is what the Ten Commandments represented. These were God's living stones that were his witnesses. They witnessed that he was resurrected from the dead. If you remember the story in the Bible, the two disciples ran to the tomb and Jesus was not there. So this is why he is showing us through this hidden wisdom, which the hidden manna is, it's hidden wisdom that God has given us all if we crack into it but that the two tables represent the two witnesses. This is why Jesus sent the disciples out two by two, because they were to witness together that Jesus Christ had came to the earth. So they told everyone he came, and then after he was gone, they also witnessed the same way. You see the disciples going out two by two. So 
before I get ahead of myself with the, the commandments, I want to go back to this symbol. Because here was the marriage. The marriage was about Mary and Jesus. There's rumors on the book, the Holy uh, Blood, Holy Grail, that Jesus married Mary. But when you look at this image, we are able to see, we saw the son, Ben, and we saw his queen, which was the bride. Mary was the first witness who saw that Jesus was resurrected. That's why she is his bride. She is the first. So she is the mother of the church, just like Adam and Eve. And they call, the Bible calls Jesus the second Adam. So he was paired with Mary who he converted. So we now see Jesus and Mary, and he tells Mary to go tell the disciples. And that's when the two stones come, and they run to his tomb, and they see he's not there. He has risen. But that's the other part that I want to show about these two tables, is that they were under the law. And that's what the Seder Square, the, the tables of stone represent. It represents the Hebrews who were under the law. And as Jesus said, he came to give liberty. He came to set the captives free. So those who were under the law represented the apostles. Now we get to the branch. And that's the part where you're really going to understand who Jesus is and why he came. So we saw the wedding. We see the witnesses at the wedding who are now been freed. I'm going to make another say the square. Give me one second. Another one over here. And you will understand. As I said earlier, in the beginning of this presentation, the almonds, some were bitter and some were sweet, which was perfect. That's the ones you want to choose. So we're going to first take this word almond. And I'll just pick up one. This is a fruit and a seed. This is your life. And this is what God came to judge. As he said, if I judge, we as humans are 100% free will. We are to follow God if we want to. If you don't want to, you don't have to. God is not forcing us to serve him. It's your choice to serve him. And I'm going to show you that after I finish this presentation here. But there's only a taste that he can tell about our lives because God is able to see what we can't see. And the way he sees us is the way we've been marked. Now to explain how to say the square captured the blood of Jesus. I'm going somewhere. One of the main things Jesus did, which not many ministers speak about, was that Jesus wrote, R-O-T-E. Jesus wrote in the ground. No one knows what he wrote. The Bible doesn't record what he wrote, but Jesus wrote something and it was significant. But we continue on to the story that we overlook what he did. When Jesus wrote, he wrote the whole, the Seder Square in the earth because it's the name of the Father. When you read the story of Ezekiel chapter 9, the man in linen
stood out amongst the six other men, the five other men. So it was six men, but the man in linen stood out because there was something that he had. He had on white linen and he had, give me one second. He had an ink horn on his side, which was writing equipment. The way the Israelites wrote back then in ancient days was that they used an ink horn to write with. Well, in the middle here, R-E-P-E-N, these letters here hide a word. And that word is murder. Jesus said they will kill him. And so we see his fate F-A-T-E is in the middle of the Seder Square. But he said he, God gave him the power to lay down his life. So he allowed man to murder him and crucify him to a cross, or which is really execute him to a cross. And then he had the power to also, which is saying the same thing, which God was his vow. To be renewed, which is resurrected. So right here we see it, R-E-N-E-W-E-D. So he had the power to lay down his life, be murdered, and he had the power to be resurrected. So also in here, and this is my last part of this part, you have this letter Q. You have E R E. In. That is the word Karen. Karen in Hebrew is what this is. This is a horn. Karen means horn. And this is the cup of Jesus. This cup, this horn, held his murdered, spilled blood. When Jesus wrote this in the dirt in Ezekiel 9, the man in linen, let me put this down for a second. The man in linen was charged to go <coughs> excuse me, into the temple at God's church and put a mark on the foreheads of all those who sigh and cry for the abominations done in Jerusalem. When you take all the letters that spells man in linen, you get the M-A-N-I, the L, we have the E, and we have the end. So these are all of the letters that spell man and linen. And what you get from this is really Emmanuel. I M M A N U E and there's the L in it. So you have Emmanuel and that's what the Bible said Jesus' name would be. Emmanuel, which meant God with us. So God with us, Emmanuel, went into the temple and he rode on the temple floor. He rode something the Bible does not call. But it says one key word which we can unlock. It said he stooped. Down and wrote in the dust of the earth. And if you unlock this word stoop, you will see what he did was he posted a notice to the world. As I said before, that you shall all know me. You shall all acknowledge God. All tongues will confess. This is what Jesus posted on the temple floor. Now, when did he seal it with his blood? Well, on the cross, it shows us that his blood spilled out when they stabbed him in his side. And what this was, if this is the Holy Grail, this is his cup. This is this word right here. And what this word here also makes is Erden. E-R-D-E-N. Erden means earth. The blood of the Son of God fell to the earth. 
mixed with blood and water. And this is what happened. Imagine this is blood. These come from this cup to this cup. And he said to take it. This is the new covenant of my blood, in my blood. So we see this is renewed. And that's why it is called the renewed covenant. Because he renewed it with the Gentiles. He opened it back up to the rest of the world from the Garden of Eden. That's why it's a new covenant because we have now been reconnected with God. And he passed the cup around and everyone shared the cup. That's when God's blood fell down to the earth and it's all in the ink horn. So now I'm going to get back to the almonds. But I had to deviate for a little moment to get you up to here. So we have the man in linen. We have the almond. Okay, let's see. Almond unlocked. We have the A. We have the L. Matter of fact, this is all the letters that spell almond. So I don't even have to unlock it. It's right there. What you get from this is the word P O P. U L A T E. Populous. P O P U L A C E. And that's how you get this. What populous means, this is the population. So I showed you how the wedding started from with the seal of God here, with over the ark of the mercy seat. I showed you the two tables of stone, which are the apostles who were under the law of God. And now we come to Aaron's rod, which is a branch, and it budded the almonds. But Aaron's rod, as you see here, his name was written on the branch, and it was placed before the testimony. So we're going to take Aaron's rod. His name that was placed on his rod, and we're going to see these are the letters that make it up. We have the A, we have an R, an O, we have an N, an S, and a D. And what we're going to get from this is C O R B A N S. This is, this rod of Aaron's is really the carbons rod. The carbons is the Hebrew word for sacrifice. As I said, the man, Regener, is the branch, and he's also the sacrifice. His rod, he assumed this rod. As he said, if I judge, my judgment is just. If. So how is he going to judge you or not? As I said before, it's your choice. But whatever you decide to do, it's going to rate you. Whatever you believe in your heart, whether you believe God or not. And the reason why it's called the testimony is because somewhere in your life, you testify whether or not you love God you believe in him or you don't. And that's in your heart. And as I can show you, that's what the almonds represent. God can see inside of you. He knows how you taste. He knows if you are sweet or if you are bitter. And so he's able to judge you to see if you are sweet or bitter. And he knows how you taste. So we see the carbons. We see his name on the rod. He's assumed it. He's the sacrifice. And now I'm going to show you how God makes this judgment on the say square. And it's with the box. Back to the Ark of the Covenant. As you can see, that is a box. This is what it looks like. Now, 
That is a box. So you can put your belongings in here. And this is what God is going to do. He's going to place, and that's why I have this box, to show he's going to place what does these letters make up. I'm sorry, I didn't get to that part. But if you trace out the letters, you have a T, R, E, A, S, U, R, E, D. That's what makes up this box. So all of his treasured populace, that's what he said. The angels will come and separate the righteous from the just. The righteous are going to be the treasured ones. So he's going to put them in a box that he's going to keep. They are precious. They are the chosen ones that he's going to choose. And then he's going to take on the next one. On this side, I'm going to use the blue marker this time. And the word is, is going this way. This is why he said, let the wheat and the tares grow up together. Because he's letting us all grow up together. But God is able to see what we can't see. He sees it. So in this box, what makes up this letters is the word rotten. So as I said, you had sweet almonds, you had bitter almonds. So this is what God is going to do. But as I said in the opening video, I said, if you give your life to Christ, because there's a word in here, God so loved the world. He had his own chosen people, but he still didn't give up on the world. So he sent his son from this treasured location and he sent them over here because these same letters make the word Redentor. Redentor means savior. It's a Portuguese word and it means savior. So we see he sent his son to be the redeemer of the world. And so he sent this son to go and save us. Those who are rotten and those who are under oppression. And if you look closely, the same letter spell this word here, which is the word downtrodden. So God sees if you are under abuse and are downtrodden, just like he saved the Israelites when they were downtrodden people in Egypt, he freed them and he's showing us that he can also come and free us as well. So he sent his son to die on the cross to release us and give us the freedom that Christ said he can give us, liberty. And so we have this in his blood. But there's another word in here. As I said, if you give your life to Christ and you become baptized, the word is... Converted. If you become converted, then you are treasured. You have given, you have crossed over, and you are no longer rotten. You are no longer under oppression where you couldn't get out and get free. He has allowed you now to get free. So if you were locked in jail and couldn't get to church, God has made it where he can come, the church can come to you. Because as I said, he don't meet with us over the Ark of the Covenant no more. You can't get to the Ark no more. Well, you don't have to worry about a temple. The temple has been destroyed for a long time. But he's saying, I stand at the door and knock and he will come to you. So that is what this is showing. The Seda Square is consecrated. Let's go over what we talked about already. It's been consecrated. It is the Sanctum Sanctorum, the Holy of Holies. I've showed you that the blood of Christ is in there. It shows that he has been, he was murdered. And he was resurrected. So I've shown you everything in there. The last thing I want to show you. I want to go back. To the rotten. Because I wouldn't believe this was a ministry. If I don't teach this. Because that's what this is all about. And if I don't teach it, then I'm just wasting my time. And 
wasting your time. What's the most important thing I want you to understand that's in here? Most of us are over here. We think we're holy, but I tell you what, I got 21 steps that God has shown me to show this world in this year of 2021. These 21 steps to show you how to get right. As he said, he has, he knows the plans he have for us, plans for a future and a hope. Future. Unlock means return. R-E-T-U-R-N. The T is, and the F is the same. Hope. He wants you to obey. So he wants you to stop, obey him, and return to him. That's what this is all about. We all know what John 3.16 says. So God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. Whosoever believe in him would not perish, but have everlasting life. This word right here, P-E-R-E-N-E. P-E-R-E-N-E. -E. What this word is, perin, is a Portuguese word. And it means everlasting. There's also another word in here. And that word is merced. M-E-R-C-E-D. Merced. It means mercy. Mercy and everlasting. And as I told you before, N-E-D-E-R, neither, is Hebrew for vow. So God has given you his word, his vow, the other comforter, so that you can feel comfortable and not have anything to worry about, that his blood is in the earth, his son has died, so that you can have mercy that is everlasting to everlasting. That's what this is doing. Everlasting is going this way, and then it's going that way. So you have everlasting to everlasting mercy from the Father above. And he wants you to believe in this. As Jesus said, if you have faith the size of a mustard seed, what this mustard seed of faith means as far as in relationship with the Seder Square, all you have to do is write it. I'm telling you, with this virus going on and no one knows how to protect themselves, they don't know what you should wear. Two masks, three masks, or four masks. I'm telling you, you write this, learn it, rememberize it, and that you keep it in your head or put it somewhere in your house where you're going to do what you say in your Lord's prayer, that you will make the Lord's name hallowed. Hallowed be thy name. Hallowed means to make it holy. Back to the word consecrated. Do you have the Lord's name in your home anywhere? Is his name in your house? You might have his son name, Jesus, which are one and the same. But do you have the father's name? Because you have to go to Jesus and ask Jesus to ask the father. You have to believe in the father as well. So you have to make his name hallowed. As I showed you, this name is one. It's also the name Panam Nostrum, which means our bread. So we have Padanostum, which is our father, and Panamnostrum, which is our bread. That's the son. That's what we eat every morning. We ask for the mercy that he has given us to the earth. Our bread, to be able to call upon the name of our father. So we have this. Now back to this word. The rotten are here. As I said, most of us are over here. We go here every day when we sin or we lie and we sit down. We got to repent for it to get back into the treasure spot. So at the end of each day, we have to keep doing this to make sure we go back to the treasure area. But there are vows in here, which God is promising. If you don't decide to follow him, as I said, it's free will. Excuse me. 
you will be tormented and tortured. That's what he's promised. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Life eternally or eternally punished. The choice is up to you. So you want a life sentence from Jesus that gives you everlasting living life, not an everlasting death sentence. So this is what it's going to be. You're going to be tortured and tormented. I don't want this. When I saw this and I realized it as I wrote it, I say, man, I don't want it. But that's what this word Asa means. Asa means healer. And that's what God is showing us with the leftovers. We have someone we can go to who is our healer. He can convert us. And that's what this word converted is. He can convert us. He has come over here and he has sent his spirit. And that word is in there. And I'm going to show you now. It is... downtrodden or comforted because he has given his word. That's why Jesus said, blessed are the poor because they shall be comforted. This is what this is. You are now comforted because you have his promise. And that's what the branch was. The Redentor came to us and he gave his life and he saved us from being tortured and tormented for the rest of our life, for all eternity. And we can now get healed and be converted and be comforted. And live with him in green pastures. Because that's what the treasure are going to have. It also spells the word pastures. He's going to have a place for us in heaven. That we can live with him in eternal heaven. So this is what I wanted to show you guys. The Seder Square is God's cup. It is the hidden manna. I promised that today on this Super Bowl Sunday. I was going to show you guys the hidden manna. And to show you a little more closely, here is the Seder Square on a plate that God is offering us. This is what he meant by the bread. This is my body, which is broken for you. All of these letters, as I've been showing you, you can twist them, you can spin them, you can turn them. When you read the book of Ezekiel, beginning in chapter one, you'll see the will within the will, and you'll be able to understand what he saw, because he saw all of these letters turning and spinning. And that's where I got the concept to take the Seder Square, turn the letters, and then I start being able to see other words and other visions inside of this Seder Square. So this is the bread that he offered us. This is the bread that we can eat and share with one another. And as I show, all the promises of God are here. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this presentation. As you see, I have the blood of Jesus on my head because this is the cup. And that's what the blood is. His blood fell into the earth. That's what I've been wearing on my head all the while. I've been marked. I'm wearing his blood. That the blood of the regineer, the branch, the one who came to the earth was executed. And that's what I want to show you one last thing because I can't finish this without that. Executed, unlocked, is really extended. And that's what Jesus Christ is doing on the cross. He is showing us when he was on the cross, he extended his hands out to us. And he's saying, come to me or I will come to you. And he's going to receive you as his own. Because that is the foundation of God. I have a whole lot more to say. I've been dealing with this Seder Square since 2012. I've been trying to get the message out. Um, but some reason, um, I knew God would give me a sign when I was to do the Seder Square. And I felt that it was, this Super Bowl Sunday is my first day to really do it. Explain everything. No more hiding it. No more concealing it. To just show everybody everything that I know. And that's what I'm going to show you guys. I'm going to show you all of the words I know. I'm not holding back anything else. And there's a whole lot more that I have to show you and to teach you each and every day so that you can get a better, easier concept. You're going to be surprised by how much knowledge and wisdom is in here. God said, I will shame the wisdom of the wise. I will shame the wisdom of the wise. What I want to show you, 
This early state of square here, this is the second oldest one. This is the replica of the second oldest one. One that looks just like this sits in Yale University. Yale University has had it since the 1930s, and they can't tell you much about it. I am able to tell you everything, why this is holy, why this is sacred, why this is the cup that Jesus had that caught his blood. This is it. But they can't teach us anything. And Yale is one of the most prestigious universities in the world. And so I'm showing you that God has used someone like me who did not finish college, but I was able to learn from the Holy Spirit. No man taught me to say the square. The, Jesus Christ sat before me in a dream for 111 straight days. And he taught me how to see the Satan Square, understand it, to see these words, and to see all of the hidden letters in there. There are 19 more letters that are hidden inside of these eight alphabets. And I haven't released them all out yet. So I just have to want to show you, this is what he means by he's going to shame the wisdom of the wise. Because he wants to show that he is mighty. He is God. And he uses the weak people like myself to show how strong he is. This symbol has been lost for almost 2,000 years, but he's shown that he was able to come way over here to Tampa Bay and find someone like me who wanted to know God in a deeper way, and he saw my heart, and he opened it up, and he fed me all of the information that I wanted, and as long as I kept receiving information, he kept feeding it to me, and I never gave up, so I just want you guys to have it, to take it, and like I said, to share it, because this is his cup, this is what you need. Like I said, faith of a mustard seed. All you got to do is write it. You don't have to worry about the virus, the virus because you're protected, you're covered. And there's a lot more I can get into on the virus that I will get into. And I'm going to show you. Jesus said he came for division. It's all on here. I'm going to show you. Like I said, I was going to show you why this is the Lord's table. I engraved this Seder square on my own. God merged the tables. What he did was what Shame and the wisdom of the wise, what they didn't catch was when he told uh, Moses to cart about two tables of stone, the two tables are the rock. But this, So this is one table, as you see, but there are two tables. So that's one table, but on the Seder Square is another table. It is words. This is how God was able to hide this before the wisest people on the earth that they didn't recognize this is two tables. It is God's word that we are to eat. So this is the Lord's table. It's the Holy Grail. There's a whole lot more I can go in and explain to what this is. It is so much information, but it is definitely something you should keep, share, and pass on because it is your inheritance. This is what you are to leave to your children, 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 the name of God. You want to make sure they have his name call upon it so that you all can be one big happy family up in heaven. And that's what you want to make sure that God saves your family and your house is covered just like he promised David all the way up to Jesus. He would be able to go up to heaven and see his son sitting, his grandson rather, great how many greats down the line sitting on the throne of God as is also as his Lord and Savior as well. So that's something amazing for him to see, and it's going to be something amazing for all of us to see. But we also want to save our own friends and family. And that's why God is now merging the two tables for us to now love our neighbor as we love ourselves. This is Jesus converting the two tables for us. The Ten Commandments have been converted, as he told us, to two commandments. Love the Lord and love your neighbor as you love yourself. So it's now one table, two tables on the one. It's been condensed. So, like I said, I hope you appreciate it. Enjoy the game. If you're watching this earlier or afterward, I hope, to, um, of course, the Buccaneers win. I live in Tampa, so I'm rooting for my home team. So, I hope you all enjoyed the game. If not, just have a good time. Enjoy the city because Tampa is the place of pirates. I was able to find treasure in this city, and I found the Holy Grail here in Tampa Bay. And I hope you also find some treasure that I'm able to give out to the rest of the world, beginning here in Tampa Bay. So thank you all. Have a blessed day and hope to see you again.